Hey there, it's Sean McGeever, and I'm back here with part three of our Biblical Original Language Word Studies. I'm just going to do a practical example uh, that I want to do one. I'm a Young Life leader, and we do a lot of talks from the Gospels. And we talk a lot about um, the life of Jesus, the things that he said, and the things that he did. And so we're going to actually take a look at one of those examples of a story that we might tell. Um, just as a little bit of a review, in part one, we talked about how we determine the original language. We use a quality word-for-word -word translation in English, and we have three guardrails. We then, in part two, looked at how to choose key words, use blueletterbible.org to find the original word in details, and then return to the original context. Well, we're going to do a practical example today, and we're going to look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 through 4. This is a story where a leper came before Jesus, and he healed him. And I just wanted to take a little bit closer look at one of the words and see how that might be helpful for uh, our own understanding and how we might pass that along in a talk or to our friends in a Bible study or such. Um, I noticed in here one of our rules for finding a key word is to find a word that's repeated. And this word clean is used. In verse 2 it says, uh, the leper says, you can make me clean. Jesus in verse 3 says, I am willing, be clean. And then it says immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So let's take a little bit uh, closer look and see what this word means. If you can recall, uh, the first thing that we do is head to Blue Letter Bible. So I'm going to head to Blue Letter Bible and we are going to look at Matthew 8 verse 2. And once again, we're going to choose the New American Standard Bible. When we do that, we will click on the uh, verse there and once again we have the Greek uh, word up here and in the we have two columns uh, the NASB we have the Greek and the strongest word in the middle here down here just gonna skip right down here's our word clean and we're gonna click on the strongs word catharizo is the Greek word and it's an interesting word so it is a verb in, at least in this case here in Matthew 8 2 and you can see how to pronounce it, catharizo, and it has a couple options about how you might translate, and this is the interesting part. First, it has two main uh, meanings, ranges of meaning. One is to make clean, and two is to pronounce clean in the Levitical sense, as in a priestly sense in the Old Testament when they would clean something. Now, for the first part, to make clean, it's broken down into two main parts. We can see to make clean, like physically, or physical stains or dirt, or in a moral sense. Now, this is where I think it might get a bit interesting and helpful and help us to be more accurate to what's actually being said there by Jesus and to not maybe use eyes of Jesus or invent something that's not being said. So, uh, there you know, essentially are three options. To make clean, like physical stains, dirt, make clean in a moral sense, or make clean Levitically uh, in a ceremonial way in the Old Testament. Uh, in a physical sense, it could be like food or utensils. It could be the cleansing of a leper to be cleaned. It could also be uh, to remove by cleansing, like to wash something. Uh, in a moral sense, it could be free from the defilement of sin or purity or guilt uh, or to consecrate something morally uh, for a purpose. So you can go down here and see that there's another verse, uh, another definition that, that has a similar meaning to cleanse literally or figuratively to make. Uh, clean or to cleanse, to purge, to purify. We also can see here that this Greek word is used 35 times in the New Testament. And we can go down and read all these different instances, and we will, uh, a couple of them. The, where I want to point your attention to is where we, context is key. So we want to know how Matthew uses the word. So we know that he uses it uh, in Matthew 2, not in Matthew 3, he uses it twice. But then he uses it a handful of other times, and so that'll be helpful for us to look at. Then there are other instances as well. So we have now done some of our research, and we are going to uh, present it. So we determined the original word. We did these various things. There it is. Clean. Catharizo. It means to make clean like physically, like stain or dirt, uh, uh, on utensils or food, like a leper who needs curing. In a moral sense, 
free from sin, or free from guilt, or consecrate morally, or it means to clean Levitically. And there are six uses of this word in uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and there are 29 other uses in the New Testament. So we, uh, when we go back and look at the uh, passage, I'll just touch it. it says, a leper came to him and bowed down before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. What kind of clean is he talking about there? Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I'm willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Well, if you recall, we have really an option between whether that cleansing was physically or morally. Now, it could mean both, but chances are it, it had a primary use there. Let's go back to Blue Letter Bible and look at how Matthew uses the word. It says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Well, in the parallel kind of idea there is to heal the sick um, means the sick get better. To raise the dead means the dead raise. To cast out demons. These are kind of literal, um, these are not figurative uses. Now, there's a little bit of a story with the word heal, but more or less with the, this um, uh, you know, succession of words here, it's not figurative. It's, it's more of a literal. Uh, let's go to this next usage by Matthew. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. So these are all, once again, literal uses. We have two uses in Matthew, just two chapters, three chapters later, of Matthew using the same exact word in a literal way, not figuratively, not in regard to his moral um, sensibilities, but his the literal use of being healed. Um, now, later, uh, much later, Matthew 23, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you clean the outside of your cup of your dish, but inside are full of robbery and self-indulgence. Here is a good example of the dual um, uh, usage of the word. Could could mean how Pharisees might want to be clean in a Levitical sense, but also, um, or how can you be full of self-indulgence? Well, that's a figurative sense about morality. Next verse. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of your cup and the dish so that the outside may be clean. This also seems to be figurative. Now, one thing I want to point out is in his figurative usage here, the Pharisees didn't actually need to be clean. The literal sense doesn't really apply. We're not talking about a cup and a dish. We are talking about their figurative moral sense. All right. And if you're to go on and look at the other examples, I think you would find something similar. So let's return here. Let's return to what we've learned so far. We basically need to make a decision when it's, Jesus said to be clean, that um, he has to be clean. Was he talking about his moral senses in regard to sin and guilt, or was he talking about being physically cleaned? Well, if we go back and look, a leper came to him and bowed down before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. At this point, it's clear because of Matthew's usage of this word clean that we should default to his uh, meaning, which means to be physically clean. It means to be uh, cleansed in a physical sense, not in a figurative uh, sense about his sinfulness. So to be clear, when the leper is asking to be cleansed, he is asking to be healed in his body. He's not asking to be forgiven. When Jesus says to him, be cleansed, he is saying, I'm going to heal your body. He's not saying, as best as we can tell, based on Matthew's usage in this kind of context, he's not saying, be forgiven. He's not saying, I'm cleaning you on the outside and in the inside. So, uh, in this sense, it helps us to stay more accurate to what the original meaning of the word was and what Matthew likely intended. Um, the, in the instances where Matthew uses the word cleanse or to clean, and he's talking about someone who has a physical need. That's the usage that he means for it. If he is talking to someone like the Pharisees who don't physically need cleaning, he might be defaulting to the figurative sense that might have more to do with guilt, um, responsibility, sinfulness, that sort of thing. So I hope that that would uh, help you a little bit if you're planning a talk or wanted to talk, uh, you know, do a Bible study. It, it kind of provides some guardrails and 
<clears throat> as best as we can tell from this passage, it would be good to stick to that Jesus is talking about physical healing and not just sin. In other places, we absolutely know that he's talking about healing from sin. But in Matthew 8, 2 through 4, this is a story about the leper being healed physically. Hope that example was helpful and uh, many blessings on your ministry. Thanks for hanging in here for all three of these uh, lessons on how to do original language word studies in the Bible. Thanks a lot. Bye.